Healthy Rebel Radio is sponsored by the Healthy Rebel app. 300 plus secretly healthy, delicious, mouth-watering dessert and treat recipes made with all natural whole food ingredients. Now available for download on the App Store and Google Play. Find out more details at HealthyRebel.com. Welcome to Healthy Rebel Radio. I'm your host, Dr. David Geyser. I'm here with my Damien Health Healthy Rebel co-founder, Amy Lane. Good morning. Good morning. Just a few quick health and wellness stories to review today. I really wanted to start with talking about uh, hormone maintenance and weight loss. Mm. We haven't done a lot of this. I mean, we talked a little bit about cortisol, but um, that's a really common one to speak about. I wanted to speak about estrogen and progesterone. Mm. Um, I know that in your... In your practice, you've worked with a lot of women who have had cycles that have been irregular. Mm-hmm. And in bringing regularity to cycles, you see improved weight loss. Oh, yeah. Um, and, of course, everyone knows about menopause mm-hmm. and being having, being fearful of gaining weight in menopause. Mm-hmm. And it being very real for so many. Well, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So there's a lot of self-fulfilling prophecy in the misinformation. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we hear that menopause is this so then that's what we experience right when there's this you know almost secret group of women that have found out a different level of information and aren't experiencing all those negative we'll say symptoms uh changes uh, including rapid weight gain from apparent supposedly no reason well i mean it's the same thing with with perimenopause or or even during regular cycles, a, women, a lot of women believe that their irregularity and their premenstrual symptoms are just normal and that's all good. Right. Not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you, you know, usually, okay, it's, it's not a big deal health-wise, but it, you can greatly optimize your lifestyle by improving the cycle. Sometimes we get so comfortable in things that don't feel good. And because, say, we've raised in a family that, oh, this is how it is, or yeah, you sure. surround yourself with friends that have the same type of experiences, we start to classify things that are not normal as normal. And we almost just get comfortable in a certain level of suffering and just call that our normal. Mm -hmm. And I find that very true with women because women are very good at dealing with negative consequences and then moving on. It's true. So it's much better than men. Oh, well, that's not, that's not even a debate. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's not. Um, but I find this really true with hormonal stuff, and they almost get defensive when you tell them it doesn't have to be like this. Right. You know, they'll start digging up the family evidence or the, well, my GP said, or mm-hmm. my friend has this. Right, but what if it could be better? Just what if? Absolutely. Let in the idea. Well, and it wasn't until the last, I don't know how long it's been, 10 or 15 years since we've had saliva testing, where you can, saliva and dried urine testing, where you can look throughout the course of the month how your hormones rise and fall. And you can assess them compared to with people who don't have symptoms mm. or people who have, who have really strict regular cycles. Um, and you can see, and this term has been coined during this time, is estrogen dominance in, in so many women with, with, with um, not only weight gain, but, but premenstrual symptoms. Mm. So this idea of highs and lows estrogen, we know in menopause you have really low hormones. So it's the opposite of what I'm saying. Um, there is some physiological research for both sides of the argument. Really high levels of estrogen can cause weight gain. Really low levels of estrogen can cause weight gain. It's about being in the optimal range. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's many reasons for this. I mean, the, the, the thing about estrogen is a lot of people have, have heard about the, the studies that have shown that estrogen improves metabolic rate. Um, when you have higher estrogen levels, maybe it's easier to lose weight. And that was what was said when everyone was gaining weight during menopause. Oh, my estrogen is low, so I'm, I'm gaining weight. Mm. Um, and yes, when you have normal levels of estrogen, your metabolic rate is pretty stable. Because we all know that all these hormones have impacts on other hormones. They, they impact thyroid hormone, they impact stress hormone. Um, so that changes everything. They, they impact appetite hormones. It's, it's all interconnected. Um, but what we really know now is that estrogen suppresses insulin release. Uh, so when you have really low estrogen levels, like in menopause, uh, 
you can have less insulin suppression. So your insulin can rise, you can pull more blood sugar into the cells, and you can develop fat cells quicker, which then those fat cells make estrogen. Um, whereas when you have really high levels of estrogen in irregular cycles pre-menopause, um, there's this tendency for belly fat, mm. for, for, for waist weight gain, for, mm. for thigh weight gain. Um, and a lot of people have said that, but also there's this, this impact of bloating, water retention, all these symptoms of, of irregular cycles. So yeah, it, it's, it's really difficult to understand. And the research isn't there for all the different aspects of, of hormone balancing. Um, but we know that there is in many premenstrual sym- uh, syndrome uh, experiences, there's an estrogen dominant picture. Mm-hmm. Irritability, bloating, cramping, all of these symptoms, and then subsequent weight gain. Mm-hmm. So what is going on? How can we fix it? Um, the, the core thing we do in naturopathic medicine is detox. But a lot of these, uh, a lot of these principles involved in detox and reducing estrogen load quicker are, are what you've been teaching for so many years. Water intake, bowel movements, high fiber, high veggies. Um, we use I3C DIM and calcium D-glucrate. I3C and DIM are from, from uh, cauliflower, broccoli, cruciferous veggies. Uh, high doses of these have been shown to improve liver detox of these hormones. But also, fiber and water are so, incre- so, so important. And exercise and sleep, you know, we, we act like hormones are this magical separate thing, but they're not. They're a building block of just what basic health is. And if you don't start with the basic health stuff, I mean, sometimes it has nothing to do with hormones. People will say, um, I'm going through menopause and I'm gaining weight. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. And I'll say, okay, send me everything you eat in a week, everything you do. And just by going through what they're doing, if you're, if you're, you know, 55, 65 and you're not working out and you're eating like you did when you were 18. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. You're probably actually causing hormonal imbalances. Well, here's what happens in menopause, and we have to keep this in mind. When you have less insulin suppression, because your estrogen is lower, so your insulin goes up, so blood sugar is pulled into the cells quicker. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's a bit harder to stabilize your blood sugar, so you have to have these lifestyle components underway. What you're speaking Mm -hmm. about is, is right on. If you're eating... If you're eating protein, if you're eating lots of good fiber, if you're eating lots of slow digesting vegetables, Mm. then basically you're going to have this stable blood sugar. Mm -hmm. So these insulin changes aren't going to matter so much for you. Mm -hmm. But if your diet previous, like let's say you're stressed, you're not sleeping well, but also your diet was completely terrible Mm. um, and maybe you had high estrogen symptoms and now all of a sudden you're in menopause and everything has plummeted. your insulin is going to be completely thrown off and you're going to feel starving. You're not going to have those, uh, you're not going to have the, the brain signals that say, okay, listen, I've eaten enough because your blood sugar is going to be thrown off. And you're also marrying this with, if you're not working out a low lean muscle mass, which means your metabolism is lower. That's right. So it's like, there's no one fix without the other. You need to get your lifestyle on point to see hormonal balance I don't care who you are oh absolutely even if you go and you do all the hormonal testing and you take the proper hormones you're still never going to feel great unless you get the baseline of eating properly exercising properly drinking water sleeping that stuff absolutely and before even considering hormone testing I want to make sure all those things are tied up just so we know where you're at when, it's, when things are stable. But the other same, the thing about this is, is is that the one thing that I have found positive is when people join the program and then they go straight to you to do hormone testing via online or in person, mm-hmm. is that there are some hormonal imbalances that cause anxiety. So I have found that some people that have had the, the their hormones stabilized right at the beginning of the program while doing the program, have found it easy to settle into the program. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like they, they're getting it, they understand that they have to do the base, like they can't jump just and take supplements and whatever. They understand they have to do it all, but they find it easier to relax into doing it all because they don't feel anxious. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. That's just what I've found. No, and, and this has another impact on blood sugar. I mean, 
I didn't mean to bring this back to blood sugar every single time, but when your cortisol is really high, when you're stressed, then you're you're taking that blood sugar and you're turning it into fat quicker. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's one it's one of the roles, right? You need to metabolize this sugar for energy. Yeah. Um. So you can if you can burn it as calories if you're exercising, which is excellent. If you're not exercising, if you're not following the program, uh, then you're going to store it as fat because you're metabolizing the sugar with high cortisol. Right. So what you want to do is absolutely get that stress under control first. It's going to be extremely helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, now, we, we all know that in our current environment, there's tons of estrogen exposure that, that is out of our control. Mm. From the meat we consume, the dairy we consume, the, the pollution we're exposed to, the phthalates we're exposed to in certain products and, and that are around the home. Makeup, body wash, shampoo, mm-hmm. cleaners. Exactly. We're so bombarded. All of these exposures are something to consider when you're dealing with, say, you know, say we're premenopause, say we're talking about irregular cycles, and you, maybe you're in a situation of estrogen dominance, irritability, cramping, those types of things, uh, 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 a predisposition for fibrocystic breasts, um, breast tenderness, tenderness premenstrually, all these things, um, migraines. Check your exposures as well. Mm. I mean, we're talking detox. But it's, it's not going to do anything if you're detoxing, but you're also being exposed constantly, right? Um, now, in doing this, one of the huge consequences we're going to have is re- reduction in bloating and reduction in water retention. Um, you, you can also go for that symptom first, mm. which can be helpful. Um, it can help you feel lean. It can improve your energy. It can do all these things. Um, you can go for bloating as well at the same time. But I really like to get to the root cause. Yes. I think it's incredibly important. Um, so all the testing we do has the ability to figure all this out, which is which is excellent. Um, now we need to talk a bit about waist and, and hip weight gain. Um, it's important to know that when, when you develop these fat cells, they are also going to produce extra estrogen. That's something I don't feel like is popular knowledge. Because yeah, I mean, that's another, you know, how people get sensitive about, um, I'm very into lowering people's body fat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have no shame about that. And it's not an aesthetic dream I have for the world. It is a health dream. And this very fact for women is very, very important when it comes to preventing disease and cancer and all these horrible things. And I really would like you to speak on that because I feel like it's not out there and this body shaming crap is just taken off way too far. It's gone way too far. It is. It is. Two, two things. High cortisol, high estrogen cause waste, waste weight gain. Right. We know that. that. That's been established. These cells that are now developed, they can produce extra estrogen. So all of a sudden, now we have these hormone tests. We can see what it's like before and after. And then actually improving the situation, losing belly fat and seeing how the hormones change. When they're... When there's increased fat cells, we're seeing increased estrogen production, which throws the cycle off even more. Right. And then you have this this propensity to gain extra water weight, to hold on to more, to hold on to more water, to actually develop more fat cells because your estrogen is even higher. Right. Um, and what's happening here is there's thyroid suppression. So even though when estrogen is stabilized, metabolism is is improved. Um, when estrogen goes off the charts, we see thyroid hormone t- also being thrown off, uh, which then reduces your metabolic rate. So all these things are interconnected. Um, but yeah, it's really important to focus on core, focus on cardio. Focus but we're on... talking on uh, about estrogen in the fat cell, mm-hmm. and then you store more estrogen. You do. You absolutely do. As you make more fat cells, you store more estrogen when they also make more. Which could be detrimental. So when you have extra weight on the waist, we know that there's an increased risk of type 2 diabetes. There's an increased risk of cancer. There's an increased risk of heart disease. So all, all these risks skyrocket, especially with abdominal weight gain. Mm-hmm. Um, and now they're starting to differentiate between weight gain, uh, fat cells that are surrounding the organs, mm-hmm. and then superficial fat, superficial right. fat cells. Mm-hmm. And... One thing I want to comment on this, and not a lot of people talk about this, but cellulite production. Mm. Um, usually in menopause, these these fat cells that are on the surface, mm. uh, we say they hold estrogen, they make estrogen. When estrogen goes low, there's less collagen stimulation in those cells, and you see the indents in the skin. That's that's, that's cellulite. That's what yeah, it's hard. It's like so the thin the so the thinning skin of the overproduction of estrogen 
married with the increased in fat is what you are we are calling cellulite. Right, especially when that it's developed premenopausally, and then when estrogen goes down in menopause, there's less stimulation right. on those cells. So, so we think it's related to collagen. Well, the skin is thinner. Exactly, yeah. and and estrogen is, is has a huge role in collagen production. Right. It's not happening in men, is the idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is the thing. Um, one other thing about fat cells on the abdomen, they they ha- they can actually convert testosterone to estrogen. Hmm. So you get this, it's called aromatase, but you, you get this, this conversion of testosterone to estrogen, so then your testosterone levels are lower, right. which reduces energy, it reduces metabolic rate, uh, your ability to, to develop lean muscle, all these things. Right. Um, anyhow, all these chemical processes, it doesn't really matter too much. The point is, premenopausally, you want to have regular cycles. You want right. to shoot for that. Yeah. The way to do that, like you have always said, water, exercise, high fiber diet. Right, those are the absolute keys, and then we can go to and supplement- proper sleep and proper sleep with stress reduction. We can go to supplementation and all that at a later date, if need be. Not everyone needs that, but when they do, when they it's do, it's, it's extremely effective. It's yeah. extremely effective. My gosh, mm-hmm. um, it does take two cycles, which is the the discouraging component of normalizing. It, but it's not. I wish everyone could buckle up and just face that anything that's worth it takes time. And, you know, most of us have frigged around and caused problems with our bodies for years. So saying just a couple or a few months is going to rectify things and turn the ship around, I think is actually really nice of nature. I think it's pretty good, too. <laughs> you know? We're just so used to pharmaceuticals being su- such quick acting that it, it can be discouraged. Right, but that's not solving the problem from no, the ground up. It's, not. it's covering up a symptom. So, yeah, two cycles. I mean, for sure. And we do see changes pretty much every time. It's not a still, it's not completely solved every single time. No. It all depends on how long you've been dealing with it. If you've been dealing with it since you were 13... It's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. If you're on, you're on birth control for 10 years or more, mm-hmm. it's going to take some time. But the great news is, is that it gets better and better and better until you... For me, it was like I forgot it was even a thing. And then I was one day, you know, my cycle kind of crept up on me and I was kind of like... My God, hmm. this used to be such a terrible, torturous process. Yeah, well, I the, think... I, you know, this isn't even a thing anymore in my life. Like, it's just... That's right. I think what the symptom for you that really made all this click was the reduction in cystic acne. Cystic acne, mood swings, bloating, digestion issues. I mean, it was so predictable. Well, and you're not alone. I mean, pretty much everyone I see is going through some version of this. Right. But when you change that... It's like you want to tell every woman you meet, oh, hey, it doesn't have to be like this. Right. You know, because everyone in my family has terrible PMS. Every one of my friends, you know, would complain about it. So why would I know that there's freedom? Why would I know that there could be anything any different? The Mm -hmm. only reason I know is because you told me. And then we went to work and did the things that had to be done. And I just committed to it indefinitely Mm -hmm. until the results showed up. And that's the key point here is commitment. It takes time and it takes focus. And we're talking a lot about blood sugar regulation, talking about insulin release and how it's affected by estrogen levels. You can't eat sugar. You can't eat junk every single day. I mean, this is one of those consistency things I know. that needs to be maintained. So yeah. it really is about a healthy lifestyle. Yes, it is. Um, it, it's absolutely... And the payoff is worth it. The payoff is totally worth it. You um, know, feeling amazing consistently is so... It's freedom. And it's only a gift you can give yourself, and no, everyone can give you the tools and the information, but the only person that can make that happen is you. Mm-hmm. It's so true. Some of the simple things we're doing in terms of fiber, flaxseed is very helpful, psyllium is very helpful, vegetables, of course. Um, if you're going to be going all the way, having just increasing your broccoli and cauliflower consumption yes. is helpful. Um, water, we like to stick around the two to three liters per day. Yeah. Your urine wants to be wants to be pretty clear, yes, uh, as light as as possible. Um, exercise, one hundred and fifty minutes, thirty minutes, five days a week at least. Mm-hmm. Um, my, my gosh, the whole thing. In terms of liver detox, the the resources you need, you need protein, you need B vitamins, um, and and so a little bit of antioxidant support is helpful. So vitamin C, these things that you get from fruits, fruits. and veggies. Yeah. Um, and now the the extra thing that we use, of course, is I three C. And then these are the extracts from cauliflower and broccoli. You can do high dose, 
for two months um, and they seem to normalize estrogen dominant pictures now there's other there's other types of irregular cycles don't right. get don't don't get me wrong here it's not just estrogen dominance that's just the most common one associated with weight gain especially around the abdomen mm-hmm. um, in menopause in my practice we do a lot of bioidentical hormones they they do an excellent job it's pretty quick um, and you see results pretty much right away for things like night sweats uh, hot flashes that type of thing Mm -hmm. we always do hormone testing prior yes um and i like to start with natural therapies first to see if we can get the the nudge we need especially when there's weight gain and the symptoms of night sweats hot flashes and the other things associated with menopause aren't so severe right we'll try and do the natural things first so all these lifestyle things and then a few herbs to try and bump up the ratio here uh, of progesterone to estrogen. Right. Uh, what we're seeing is, uh, UBC studying this intensely, is just using progesterone in menopause instead of um, using estrogen and progesterone or, or, or um, other therapies that are being used out there. So, And they're having great success with it. We've been doing it for a long time. Um, lower doses, however. Anyways, it, th- this... It's not, um, it doesn't definitely have to happen. You don't have to gain weight in menopause. It's not, I mean, I would focus mostly, and this is what I do with my patients, on blood sugar regulation. I know. It's so incredibly helpful once you have that core lifestyle foundation built. Yeah. Um, and the best thing you can do is be on a, a consistent program. Yeah. I, I really do believe that. And have some guidance. Um, it, it, the severity of, of the situation d- will, will determine the type of guidance you need. And, and that's the thing too, like a lot of us, uh, whether it's someone outside telling us, look, it doesn't have to be so bad and continually affirming, um, you know, saying something different than what you're surrounded by, like your family, your family history, your friends, whatever, it, whether it's just that level or someone saying, let me see everything you ate. Right. And then honestly, you know, because we trick ourselves into cutting corners. We all do it. Mm-hmm. So if you're ready to actually really change, using the people out there that are there to help you is just something that makes the path so much easier. You cut out your own bull crap and you just do what needs to be done. It's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. Sometimes things slip by. Like, I mean, even myself... Um, we have these, these we have mixed nuts in our home and you, <laughs> this is, this is a perfect example in the program. Uh, there's snacks that are like a handful of nuts, right? Mm. So you grab a handful of nuts and that's a snack. Now for me, sometimes I'll sit down with, with yeah. the mixed nuts no. and I'll go crazy. But if you look on the back, you're looking at a handful is like 200 or more calories. Right, no. So if you're doing even two handfuls, you're approaching what would be considered a meal in terms of your fat consumption. And you're approaching what could be the one thing that's holding you back from actually burning fat. Absolutely. And these are things that just completely slip by and don't seem significant and they're, they're extremely, extremely serious. Um, it's, I, I mean, I'm talking a lot about blood sugar regulation, but that's something that people, a lot of people don't think about. And a lot of, something that a lot of people don't think about is that Perhaps what you've been told in the situation you're surrounded in, in the environment you're in, maybe what you're hearing isn't true. Right. Yeah. Maybe there's a better way. Maybe it's easier. Maybe just because there's evidence of, you know, all the people around you are facing this certain problem doesn't mean that everybody is. Mm -hmm. So that's the freedom of reaching out to someone that's outside of your current situation. That was like a real freedom thing for me because if I stayed in what I knew how I was raised, how everyone talked, what the women told me was the way, mm-hmm. I would never have known that there was another way. Right. I wouldn't even have known that I could feel great all the time. That's right. you got to look outside. You have to consider that there could be a better way. Mm-hmm. And then seek the people that are there to help you achieve that. I love it. Yeah. It's perfect. Thank you so much for listening. That's Healthy Rebel Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, please subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Uh, If you'd like to get our episodes to your inbox once a week, go to DamieHealth.com and sign up for our newsletter. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day. See you. Healthy Rebel Radio is presented by the online health and wellness center, DamieHealth.com. Since 2009, Amy Lane has successfully coached thousands of women through her signature program, the Bikini Body Program. Join today to work exclusively with Amy to unveil your greatest yet to be from the inside out. Go to DamieHealth.com for more information. 
Thank you for listening to Healthy Rebel Radio. Please connect with us on our community pages on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram, all at the handle at Damie Health. For weekly recipes, articles, and all our episodes straight to your inbox, join our newsletter at DamieHealth.com. You can find all the links discussed in today's episode in the show notes. Thank you for joining us and see you tomorrow.